What's up, guys? Matt here. Excuse me, I've just had a McDonald's, so forgive me. I'm just chowing, chowing down at the minute. How are you all doing tonight? Uh, feels great to do another live stream. Uh, I actually posted about this live stream, so hopefully there'll be a, mu a few more people in this time. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Um, as you guys can see by the title of the live stream, uh, I'm going to be talking about some of my vintage miniatures, um, which is going to be really enjoyable, I think, because there's quite a lot here that I've collected over the, over the years. So once some people come into the live stream, it'll be fun to finally show you guys some of these fragrances because um, they're really amazing. And in all honesty, I, I do wish I had full bottles of these, but whatever. Um, I think the largest one is about uh, 10 milliliters. So they're all pretty small. But uh, surprisingly, I've been able to keep them for so long. So that's what's good about this. So yeah, um, is there anyone in the chat at the moment? It'd be cool to chat with some people. Do let me know, guys. Let me know what you're wearing today. If you guys are wearing any cool fragrances, do let me know. Uh, my fragrance of the night is The Dreamer by Versace. Um, I've been wearing it quite quite a lot, actually. Um, and I just love it. It's an, it's an amazing scent. So do let me know what you guys are wearing. I would absolutely love to know. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd make this little introduction. Um, literally just waiting on people to come to the live stream. So yeah. Um, yeah, if you guys are uh, staying and looking forward to watching this live stream, just uh, you know, give me give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you guys are here. Let me know that you guys are very interested in this video. So I'm really excited for it personally. I've, this is something. This is the type of video that I want to do for a long time. Because um, I often look at my miniatures and I think, you know, there's some decent sense there. Why not actually review some? You know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm actually going to finally review some of them. Well. Maybe not review them, but show some of them off to you guys. So it's exciting, I think. Really exciting. Rob Shaw. Hi, Matt. My scent of the evening is Mustache by Rocha. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I thought it's a beautiful citrus scent, right? Very old fragrance. But it has been recently reformulated, of course. I will get a bottle of that someday. Uh, it's it's on my wish list, actually. So we'll see. Great fragrance, though. Like, I mean, it's the same with any sort of like citrus aromatic scent. Like, I love anything like that. You know, any citrus scent is always going to be pleasing, you know, and you're always going to get good impressions with citrus because, I mean, it's kind of a neutral smell. You know, everyone basically loves citrus, so... And I'm one of those people. I mean, I'm one of those people who love citrus. So um, sometimes it really depends. Though. Sometimes you can get a lot of really boring citrus fragrances, but mustache, that's a good one right there. What's up, Rich? Center of the day is 34 with a toilet from Dip. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I'm friggin' hopeless. Sounds like a niche fragrance. If it is a niche fragrance, then uh, chances are I probably won't know a lot about it. Um, you know, I have my fair share of f favorite niche fragrances, of course, but uh, if it is if it is actually a uh, niche, then do let me know. Sprody, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. How are you doing? How are you doing tonight? Got some good fragrances. Uh, in the queue for tonight's video. So it's going to be really cool, guys. Really cool. Hey, Carl, what's up, buddy? Good to have you in my stream again. It really is. Feels good. Oh, Diptyque. Okay, Diptyque. Fair enough. Never heard of them. And I'm meant to be a fragrance reviewer as well. And I'm, I'm supposed to know everything, yet I've never heard of Diptyque. Yeah, never heard of that, but sounds like a really uh, sounds like a really good so vintage brought me in like shit to a fly. 
Yeah, man, I'm going to be showing you quite a lot of my vintage miniatures uh, in a few minutes or so. It's going to be really cool. Their niche, also in Phoenix. Okay, cool. I need to get back to Newcastle. I need to check out some of the shops again because it's been a while since I've gone frequent shopping. And in all, in all honesty, I really miss it. You know, I really miss actually just going fragrance shopping and have that freedom, you know. But we've heard also, we've heard so much stuff actually recently about uh, about the whole COVID nineteen and here in the UK. Like apparently, when we're gonna have to wear masks everywhere in shops now, which is very uh, which is very strange. I mean, there must be another wave of this virus that we're that we're not exactly ready for. So. Vintage Georgia Beverly Hills Red for Men. Ooh. I would love to try the vintage version of that. Although I've heard that the new version, the new version, version, <laughs> the new version actually adds up. It actually is as good as the vintage. So it's one of those fragrances that hasn't really died. You know what I mean? Where's the best place to get miniatures? eBay, I would say, my friend. Um, you know, if, if you happen to find a seller who's really reliable, then eBay. Not saying every seller's reliable, but it's the same with any website. You know, you get your reliable sellers and you get your robbers, basically. But um, yeah, I've always used online, and I used to actually get them from this guy in Lithuania. Um, very very nice guy. I've actually forgot his name. Dalius, Dalius Lukosius. It just came back to my head. So Dalius, actually, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for uh, all of the samples that you've given me over the years, man. He must have gave me like. Well, I must have bought like 10, maybe 15 samples from this guy in the past. So eBay is a good good option. Or if you look on uh, Facebook, there's actually some good pages that sell a lot of vintage miniatures. Um, but the, the problem is not a lot of people seem to like miniatures because obviously they're really small and whatnot. I mean, miniatures weren't even for sale back in the day. I mean, you could, the reason we got miniatures was if we went into a store and we sampled a fragrance, that's what they would give you. They would give you a miniature version of the fragrance. Nowadays, you just tend to get like vials, you know, but in the eighties, the seventies, eighties, nineties, we were actually given miniature versions of the bottles. So it was very, it was quite nice. And you actually got more fragrance volume wise than you do test wise nowadays. So yeah, like all of these miniature bottles are all basically like testers that you would have picked up in the stores back when these fragrances would have launched. So it's pretty cool really, but I'm not really going any, I'm not going to go in any like specific order when I'm going to talk about these. I'm just going to sort of, I'll probably talk about the oldest one and then make my way forward like that. So got vintage Santos recently. It's immense. Oh, I bet it is. I bet it is. Like I love the, I love the version that I've got. Uh, I think my version is the, version before the new version basically now i got it like a few years ago and i only paid like 25 pounds for the 100 mil so really really good price actually for uh for a fragrance like that um so i was happy with that and it's still a really good scent but i would love to smell the vintage i really hope you're enjoying it Rich. seems what I, I bought a ton of minis um that's my brother on fortnite sorry about that guys not pathetic i told him to shut up so that i could do this live stream but Obviously not. He doesn't listen. You know what little brothers are like. They get on your nerves. Um, so I bought a ton of four mini, four minis or so, years or so. Ended up selling them all as I couldn't be arse splashing. Yeah, I don't blame you. Like, it is a bit of a, a pain in the ass to, like, turn off the top and everything and actually apply it to your skin. But other than that, you know, I actually enjoy that whole, that, that, that whole way of applying. I think it's really cool because, like, you know... Some of these, uh, I remember when I bought some of these miniatures, some of them had never been opened. So it was like literally sniffing for gold, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, I'm just going to read the last few comments and then we'll get to the first uh, first few fragrances. Um, Georgia Beverly Hills Red for Men, the dry down is someone like, it's, it's like somewhat quorum. Yeah. It is very quorum-ish, I, I guess, because that's probably because of the, uh, probably because of the leather that's in there. Um, but I personally think it's very different. I mean, quorum doesn't have any of the like big spices that red has. So, you know, quorum's very green, leathery, uh, it's kind of barbershop scent. And then to me, you know, red is very much a warm, warmer fragrance. Um, I really like red. Um, 
But that's very interesting. That it is very subtle at the quorum in the dry down. That's that's a very interesting point. Hey, yeah, I bought from him. He wraps each bottle individually. It took me about thirty minutes to unwrap my package. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least you know you're getting a very, you know, well kept in order fragrance. Basically, do you know what I mean? Because he's looking after them. He's obviously wrapping them safely for you, and that he doesn't just throw it in like any old box and just give you it. Do you know what I mean? Because like that way they can break. And obviously you don't want that. I've we've all bought fragrances that have ended up smashed and it's the worst thing that can happen is you look forward to smelling it and then next thing that happens and you end up your whole room smells of it because it's knackered in the bloody cardboard box or smashed up and crap so it's not worth it um but dalius really does pack his perfume balls nicely i prefer splash than spray for sure that's interesting yeah um Sometimes splash is just nicer. It's like it's an older, older way of applying. Just the whole feeling, the whole feeling of it, like the whole feeling of it in your hands is just nice. Sorry, that I couldn't even get my words out. Like for example, Agua Brava, brilliant fragrance. I just love the fact that I can pour that out and for it to literally feel like water in my hands. And then once I apply it, it's just amazing. So it's really, really good. What's up, Andrew? Good to see you again, buddy. Welcome back to the stream. Welcome back. So here we go. We're going to start off with my oldest fragrance. Now, this is a scent that just comes from the 70s. Um, so usually, like with a lot of miniatures, you usually you can find a lot of fragrances out there from like the 1800s, 1900s and whatnot. But this one is from the 70s, and this is the oldest one I have. So it's, it's not really that old. But uh, this is a really, really nice fragrance. And um, I've looked on eBay, and I've tried to get bigger bottles of this, but... Uh, really hard to find i think it's just really long gone now which is a real shame because the scent itself's really really good um i found this in an antique store and uh i paid around three dollars for this three dollars yeah and it is basically a i think this is a 10 mil bottle yeah it's a 10 mil bottle and it comes from a american company called Jermaine montiel and this one's called Realm Cologne. Now, you might be thinking, what? Never heard of that in my life. Well, chances are you probably haven't because this is a really old scent. This one came out, I think, 1975, 1974, I believe, actually. And in all honesty, to me, this kind of smells a little bit like uh, it has a very strong galbanum note. And it has a lot of, it has a bit of citrus, not an awful lot. There's a lot of musk in there as well. And it kind of has this sort of like suede characteristic about it. Like a suede kind of soft leathery smell. It's really, really good stuff. Um, I don't really ever wear it because it's obviously really rare. Uh, this is probably the second time I've ever applied it to my skin. First time ever applied, the first time that I ever applied this was in the review that I did like two years ago. And the smell is really, really awesome. Like it has a kind of, it kind of has a denim smell, you know, the denim cologne, the denim aftershave. It kind of smells a little bit like that. But with the galbanum, and I think there's olibanum in this as well. Um, I think it's the olibanum that gives it the similar characteristic to, uh, to denim. And this uh, miniature here is from, I think this is from 1978. Because I spoke to the lady in the shop and I was curious. I was like, do you have any idea when this fragrance was released? Because I hadn't looked on base notes and I wanted to actually find out from her. And uh, she said it was from 1978. So that's really, really interesting, personally. Really good stuff, though, guys. That's my first one. Realm Cologne. Really old school stuff. Wicked. Next one I want to show you guys is, uh, this one's a perfume, actually. Um, and as you guys know, I, I like a lot of fragrances, not necessarily meant for, um, you know, that sort of, like, you know, I like to wear all fragrances, basically. And this one is a fragrance that I, I had to buy this because I just saw it on a little table in an antique store and I paid 50 cents for this. And it's basically just a tiny, I think this is five mils. Yeah, five mil of the Eau de Parfum of Van Cleef and Arpels first. Um, 
I don't like it. <laughs> personally, um, it's a bit too aldehyde heavy for me, personally. Like, it definitely reminds me, and I, I, I don't want to say this, because I don't usually say it with a lot of old-fashioned fragrances, but this one, to me, definitely reminds me of something that my Nana would wear. It's, it's definitely a nice scent, don't get me wrong. I mean, because I'm into fragrances, I can still, like, appreciate them in that. And I can still appreciate the smell, but this is old lady-esque. Very strong on the aldehydes. There's some uh, lily of the valley in there. There's some green notes, oak moss. But you know what? Like, it's good to have. You know what I mean? It's good to have in my collection because this was the first fragrance released from the House of Van Cleef. So it's it's really nice to have. Uh, it's really nice to have it in my collection. You know, I really really like this stuff. Really like it. So that's my second one, and it's just uh, Eau de Parfum of First by Van Cleef and Arpels. Again, don't really like the smell, but I love the fact that it's in my collection. And of course, I'm a collector, so. Really happy with that, and it is a it is a cute looking bottle. I mean, you know, whatever though. I just like collecting, so that's why it's in my collection. So, and uh, another one I'm going to show you is just another feminine fragrance. We'll get this one out of the way, then we'll get the, the rest of the uh, masculine fragrances. So, this one I want to show you is from Yves Rocher, and it's called Peeve One. Again, feminine fragrance. Um, I bought this because I just like the way the bottle looked. <laughs> I thought it was uh, really nice. And actually, when I bought this, I thought it was a bit bigger. So I thought, whatever. And if I don't like it, I can just give it to my mom or I can give it to my nana or whatnot. And what it smells like, basically, is straight up peony, rose. And it's got, like, some musk in there as well and some, like, other floral notes. It kind of smells a little bit like a nay nay in all honesty. And you can kind of get that. It's going for that nay nay sort of smell with the white and the pink. Um, you know, Cacherelle's and ANA is a much more stronger fragrance, but, you know, this one's not too bad for it being a clone. And this came out in 93, I think. So, yeah, I think my nana actually used to wear this because I was showing her this bottle and she was like, ah, that looks familiar. And I was like, Fair enough. So that's P1 uh, by Yves Rocher. Okay, guys, so the rest of the fragrances here are all masculine scents. And um, I'm really excited because there, there's some really good ones here. So let's start. But first, let's get to the comments. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a lady. And you got vintage Kuros, Mitch. Uh, Rich, nice one. Rich Mitch, I should, I should say. Empty Sense, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Okay. So let's start with the first masculine fragrance, miniature of this live stream. This is, this one is actually the biggest. I, I said before that uh, the biggest one I had was about 10 mils. Well, this one here is 12 mils. And this is just, I can't express to you guys how much I love this fragrance. To me, it's a 10 out of 10. Discontinued, sadly. 10 out of 10 fragrance, in my opinion. Whether or not you guys agree, I don't know. But here it is. Minotaur by Paloma Picasso. Masterpiece, instant masterpiece. Uh, it was so it's so good that even David Bowie had this at his as his signature scent. <sighs> Came out in ninety two, I believe this one. Uh, it does have a, a sort of old fashioned smell, but it's very citrusy, bright. There's definitely some sort of Elmy resin sort of a chord going on in there. Yeah, and even the name itself, Minotaur, you know, Minotaur, which is basically half man, half horse. Um, that's what the bottle looks like. So we basically get Minotaur. So it's like the, the fragrance name just goes across the whole bottle. And it, it really is a, a beautiful looking bottle. And I got this off my good friend, uh, Matt, Matt Conkers actually gave me this. So Matt, if you're watching, thanks so much for this, buddy. Yeah, Paloma Picasso is the the uh, the house for this. And uh, it really is just an amazing scent. Like if you guys have not heard of it, 
Um, it really doesn't compare to anything else out there. It's just, it's a, it's a nice sort of orange, vanilla, resinous kind of smell. Uh, it's just really, really good stuff. I really, really do like it. So that is Minotaur, Minotaur by Paloma Picasso from 1992. John Gia, isn't Realm the one with the pheromones? No, uh, that's Realm by... Uh, comes from another company, but that is another fragrance called Realm. This one is a different fragrance called Realm, way older. It came out in the 70s, and it's basically just known as Realm Cologne by Jermaine Montiel. So just thought I'd uh, get back to you on that. Jacques Bogart Ferrio will be on the list. It sure is, and it's right here. Furio. Now, this scent, guys, if you've ever worn Kuros or any animalic scents, animalic scents that contain cinnamon, civet, any oak moss, musky kind of notes, you're going to love this fragrance right here. Furio by Jacques Bogart. It is a masterpiece, in my opinion. It definitely falls under the same category as... Kuros, but in my opinion, it's also very similar to Balenciaga Pour Homme and a little bit similar to uh, it's a little bit similar to Lapidus Pour Homme as well. So if you're into those kind of fragrances like Lapidus, Balenciaga, Kuros, that have, have have that kind of like what, what what is it? It's like a cinnamon, a honeyed cinnamon sort of animalic sense, then you're really going to like this one. This is really, really good stuff. Um, not quite sure what Furio means. I think a Furio is a Japanese prisoner of war. So I don't know if that gives you a bit of a, an enticing feel, then great. But it's just so good. And if you, if you can find a miniature of this, I would recommend it. It's, it's real. It is really expensive. Just as ice hole right there, uh, even just stated, it is a very expensive fragrance, but you can find it fairly affordable depending on where you're at. Like eBay again is the best place. So if you just go on eBay and type in like Ferio Jacques Bogart four mil miniature, I'm sure you'll find some for some decent prices. If not, then I'm sorry to hear that, guys. But uh, just keep looking. I'm sure you'll find this fragrance eventually. So yeah, guys, lovely, lovely red bottle. I just love it. Um, the nice gray cap there kind of looks like a, a little medicine ball. Um, amazing scent. It's so strong as well. Um, it's, it's so good that I actually ended up finding a 30 mil bottle of it as well. So I've got that in my collection. So it's that good that I don't ever want to part ways with it. So next one is another Jacques Bogart fragrance. And this is Witness. Witness. You guys have seen this fragrance a lot on my channel. In fact, I talked about Witness quite a lot in the uh, mainly two years ago when I when I first got these uh, when I first got these miniatures. I remember the first time I smelled this out of this miniature here. Um, I instantly fell in love. I thought, you know, this is the type of fragrance that I've wanted in my collection for a long time, and it it really is another masterpiece from Jacques Bogart, in my opinion. It's one of those Bogart scents that's considered. Vintage, of course, but if you can find Witness, you need to get your hands on it. You really do. What you're basically getting with this is a very dry smell of cinnamon sticks. It's like cinnamon sticks with kind of like a strange cardboard kind of smell. I know that sounds off-putting when I say that, but in all honesty, it, it doesn't smell off-putting when I'm smelling it right here. It smells incredible. It's like a... It just smells like my childhood. It smells like my youth. There's no other way to describe it. Like, it just smells... It smells outdoorsy. It's kind of got like a nature kind of smell. Woody, spicy. Uh, but just really, really incredible stuff, this, guys. Um, I'm not sure if it's like completely uh, overloaded with spices in terms of just cinnamon. There might be clove in there. There might be some black pepper. I don't know. But uh, yeah, amazing stuff, this guy. So if you're looking for any cool 
vintage sense. Witness is a great one to go for. I would highly recommend this, guys. So that's Witness. So that's it for Jack Bogart. Let's go to the house of Jay Casanova. With this gem released in the late 80s, or it might have been 83, actually. I don't really know. I kept the, the dates mixed up quite a lot. But uh, this one is Jay Casanova Pour Homme. And uh, even though this is just a miniature, that bottle, that, like this bottle design is just absolutely sick. I mean, I'm trying to find it so you can see the writing. Not really working, is it? Jay Casanova, Eau de Toilette, Pour Homme. There we go. And this, guys, again, in my opinion, another masterpiece. Um, masterpiece is a strong word, especially when it's for a fragrance, but... I just, there is no other fragrance in my collection that smells like this. At all. This one, it smells incredibly, uh, it smells incredibly woody, but it has like a sweet characteristic about it. It's like a sweet sandalwood meets like a lot of herbal notes. It's really, really nice. When I did my review on this, I was in the States at the time, and, uh, I did a really good review on this, actually. So if you guys are interested in seeing my review for Jay Casanova Pour Homme, go ahead and check it out. Because right now I can't really remember the notes because it was that long ago, but... God, oh, that smell definitely sticks in your brain. Like, it's really, really nice. And that's the thing with fragrances from the 80s. Like, you know, people seem to think that Kuros was the smell of the 80s. And no, it wasn't. Like, Kuros is a great scent and it comes from a great house. But there's so many other great masculine fragrances that just didn't survive simply because they weren't popular enough. Um, it wasn't to do with the ingredients or anything. It was just to do with popularity. And Jay Casanova are, were, at the time, in the 80s, a very, very, very small perfume company. And uh, this was just their men's fragrance that they released, the first men's one. So this one is beautiful. Uh, like I said, it's, it's sweet. It's got like a woody smell to it. Very herbal. But at the same time, it does have a very nice backbone of pepper, which is very enticing. At least it smells peppery to me. It's really nice. Really, really good stuff. So that's Jay Casanova Pour Homme. Um, if you guys have ever heard of that, let me know what you think. Another one I want to show you guys is a, a fragrance that I ended up getting a big bottle of as well. But this is the, uh, the miniature that I first bought of. And uh, from this miniature, this was the introduction for me, smelling this, if you want to call it that. And this is uh, Sergio Tacchini. Sergio Tacchini. This one's from 1987. Although this miniature, I think, is from 1992. So this fragrance lasted for about eight years until it was discontinued, I think, 95. 94, 95, this was discontinued. Although you can still find a lot of bottles for this available online. This is incredible stuff, okay? This is, this isn't like all of the other fragrances that I've shown, for example. Like a lot of the other ones have been like, like heavy masculine scents. I mean, even Minotaur, even though this one has the fresh notes, like that, that orangey smell that I said, it's still a very heavy masculine scent. Although this one, it has a sporty characteristic about it. It has like a, as far as I'm aware, there's lime, benzoin, sandalwood, and there might even be some bergamot in there as well. But what you get out of this is a, an old school vibe, no doubt old school vibe, but it smells fresh, it smells clean, and uh, it definitely reminds me of like, you know, it, it just reminds me of this so, sort of like old school like an old school aquatic scent, you know, like I can't really put my nose on it, but it's just really, really incredible. It just, it's, it's really hard to put my brain and to describe these fragrances for you. And, and to be honest with you, because they're all really complex scents. And this one is one of them. Uh, really, really good stuff. Sergio Tacchini guys from 1987. So, we haven't even got to some of the best ones here, guys. Like, honestly, there's some great ones here. So next one I want to show you comes from the house of Givenchy. Givenchy. And this is a scent that came out in 1986. And uh, 
you can actually buy the flanca for this fragrance, heavily available all over the world. However, the original is discontinued, it's a masterpiece, and it's, it really is just e easily one of the best fragrances in my whole collection. And sadly, it's a four mil miniature that I own, and it's called Zarius. So you guys might be aware of Zarius Rouge, the red fragrance that was released. Well, this is the original Zarius that came out in 1986. And this one is a strong lavender, um, clary sage scent. There's some citruses in there, including bergamot and grapefruit. Oh God, you know what it is? Like, this is really is class. It's, it's so classy. Like, if there's anyone out there who's ever smelled Zarius, then you need to let me know what you think because to me, guys, it's I'm, I'm smelling heaven here right now. It's so good. Uh, Rich is asking, is Zarius Rouge any good? Um, yeah, I love Zarius Rouge. I, I only own it in an aftershave form. Sadly, I don't own it in the EDT, but the aftershave that I've got is excellent. Really, really good smell. It has a kind of pimento smell, like a pepper kind of smell to it, but it's very casual. It's it's spicy and it's 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 a great scent. Really, really uh, top quality scent from Givenchy. But it's a real shame that uh, Givenchy discontinued this one, uh, the original, because it's just incredible stuff. Very, very nice lavender note in this guy. So if you're into your lavender scents, you really like this. It's really good stuff. So this is Zarius. Really, really, really good stuff, guys. I would highly recommend that you guys check this out. If you can find a miniature like this, I would get it because it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. Now, another one, another fragrance here, which is probably one of my favorite fragrances of the 80s. And as soon as I saw this for, for sale on eBay, I was like, okay, I have to get that. Because it's it's a it's a well first off it's a miniature but it's vintage and it is a first edition believe it or not this is a first edition ten mil miniature of Obsession for Men by Calvin Klein. There we go, and you can tell it's vintage because of the old gold around the cap, and then we get four men which looks really different nowadays underneath the Obsession font. Uh, but we get Calvin Klein underneath there in, you know, the original Calvin Klein font. But uh, this stuff, guys, wow. Wow, literally, this is just... <sighs> now, I'm trying to get it open because it's a bit tight. I don't want to spill any of it. This smells strong. Like, if you guys have smelled Obsession and you know what kind of smell it is, it's, it's warm, it's ambery, it's cinnamony. It's got vanilla in there. Just, it's a really, really incredible scent. And the juice color, I mean, this room doesn't do justice, but the juice color is just absolutely beautiful. Really nice, ambery color. And do I get differences from the, this version and nowadays? Yeah. Very obvious differences. Uh, the cinnamon in this smells spicier, warmer, sweeter. And the amber smells a lot more prominent as well. And I think in the... That was him sneezing right there. I think what makes Obsession, Obsession for Men such a brilliant fragrance is the fact that, you know, it's one of the first fragrances that I really fell in love with, which featured amber. And there really isn't a lot of other fragrances from the 80s that have good amber notes in them, apart from Obsession, in my opinion. Um, CK Obsession has some of the best amber in it that I've ever smelled. A lot of people call it dated and dated smell because of the amber note, but in my opinion, I think it's really, really awesome. So that's Obsession for Men as my first edition bottle. Um, one of the best fangs I've ever had this. Really, really love it. I need to get CK Obsession women for scent memories. Yeah, I own, I actually own the, the female version. I don't even call it female. I just call it uh, Obsession Eau de Parfum because that's what it is. 
That's literally all it is. It smells very similar to the men's version. It's just stronger, more prominent on a lot of the notes and whatnot. Got to shoot. Good to see you, Matt. Later, as Rich. See you a bit, Stephen. It's been really good having you, bro. You look after yourself, man. Jim R., what's up? What's up, Jim? It's good to have you in, bro. Welcome. So, you guys, we're going to get to the next... Excuse me. We're going to get to the next one now. Uh, this has been Obsession. So, really good stuff. Just going to get a quick drink here, guys. Oh, oh it's good. I've got hiccups as well. <laughs> okay, guys. So, let's finish off this miniature list. We're about... Yeah, we're just under halfway. So we'll try and get through these a bit quicker now, shall we? Next on this list, we have... Okay, I don't really care for the men's version, but I do like the women's version, and yes, they do. They do smell similar. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think if you were to smell both of them side by side, uh, I would probably pick the women's over the men's any day, simply because it is stronger, but... Of course, the men's version is lighter because it's got the cinnamon in there and it's it, it's got like a freshness to it more than the EDP. So that's not always a bad thing. But I do know what you mean, Jim. Uh, I do enjoy it quite a lot. The vintage version is amazing, though. So the next version, the next, frag the next fragrance I'm going to show you. Sorry, guys, I've got terrible hiccups at the moment. <laughs> Nothing worse. Okay, so... You guys might have seen this one before. This is Catalyst for Men by Holston. I, again, love, absolutely love this. This is just a beautiful fragrance. So what you get in this is a ton of spices. There's a touch of citrus. There's lots of lavender. There's clove. A little bit of cinnamon. Not too much. Most, mostly clove. And there's a little bit of touch of amber and uh, vanilla in the dry down. So this is primarily a clove based fragrance, but it smells great. And I just love the way the bottle looks. I mean, just, it's, it's so cool. It's like a, it's literally like an acid container in like a laboratory or something. Really, really good stuff. And this is a 7.5 ml bottle. And I picked this up on eBay for like two quid and it came in its own box and everything. So it, it's obviously like new old stock. Excuse me. And I was obviously really happy to have it and I still am. Yeah. Pretty much just like an ambery clove kind of fragrance. And it, it's, it smells really, really good stuff. Like if you guys are interested in getting a bottle of Catalyst. Um, you might still be able to find it. I mean, Jim, you're talking about it right there, my friend. I mean, it is discontinued, but you can still find it. It is still in production, and uh, you can find bottles of it available online. You've just got to really look. Literally, when it comes to finding old fragrances, it's like a treasure hunt. You've just got to make everything right. You type in everything right. These hiccups are doing my head in. And then you'll get the right results. But Catalyst is a very nice clove scent. I would highly recommend this, guys. Really, really good. Now I'm gonna plug my laptop in because it's gonna die. We don't want we do not want this to die through for the stream, so forgive me guys. Uh, okay. Okay. Look at this bad boy in. Ah, there we go. Perfectly. I recently used another mini of small tool. Another one another I only have one left. It's great, but hard to find these days. Yeah, I've heard of that. Is that the uh, is that the flanker? Mal is small tool, small tool, the flanker. Is the box brown? Like a brown woody effect? I'm pretty sure it is. That version, if it is a fragrance, Jim, uh, that's on my wish list. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm sure you're enjoying it, my friend. I've heard good stuff about it. So, so yeah, guys, we've already shown Catalyst. We're going to show a few more now. Next one I'm going to show you comes from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels again. And uh, this one again, miniature, this one is a, how big is it? Seven mil. And I bought this just out of curiosity, mainly. Uh, this was before I bought the big bottle. And uh, I was just, 
I'm really sick of these hiccups now. They're doing my head in. Um, I was just curious about how it smelled because I love the original. And this is a flanker. So this fragrance is called Eau de Zar. By, like I said, Van Cleef and Arpel. And what you get out of this basically is it's got like a lot of fruit notes in there. So it's got like pineapple. It's got melon in there. But, but in my opinion, this smells a lot like like a typical green fougere with a few citruses in there. It's like it's kind of trying to mimic, mimic uh, it's kind of like it's trying to mimic Gucci Envy with, with like a kind of cool water-esque kind of freshness, which I don't really like, but saying that, if I was to apply it, it would probably smell very different. Okay, it does. <laughs> See, from smelling it straight from the top, it doesn't smell the same, but... Yeah, it's nice. There's a lot of woody notes in there. It is it is fresh. There is a bit of a pineapple smell going on in there. Um, but it's really nice. If, if you guys are looking for a good uh, fragrance that's similar, apparently this smells a lot like Good Life by Davidoff. So if you guys have ever smelled Good Life, you'll know what I mean. That's a another really old one that came out in the 90s so this one came out around the same time so a lot of fragrances were really trying to mimic this same accord if you like that was going going on at the time but it, it still it still smells really good though like i really like this i i prefer the original czar over this this is just a bit too lighter whereas the original is a bit stronger so that's really the only thing. I mean, you're getting what you get. You know, the name says it all. Odazar. It's pretty much a, a watered down version, right? Although it isn't the same, it is still different. Odazar by Van Cleef and Appels, guys. Good fragrance. Uh, another freshie I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is another great one. Uh, really, really good, good fragrance, this one. Uh, I have worn this well, three times, very sparingly, because again, it's a small bottle. In fact, this is only, let's see, seven mil. So it's the same size as the last bottle, although some, some of them just feel a lot smaller. So this one came out in the 90s, the late 90s, and it's called Halston Z or Halston Z if you want to call it that. And uh, it's pretty much a fresh version of the infamous Z14 or 112, any of those fragrances. Because those two fragrances were launched together at the same time in 1973. And this one was, of course, the 90s. So it's a bit more of a recent release. So what you get out of this one, again, it has a typical 90s powdery, floral, bright, citrusy kind of smell. That's what it is. But there's something really intriguing inside it, which I can't quite grasp. Again, this is another fragrance that I reviewed like years ago. So I, I don't remember what the notes are or anything. I'm just going into it blindly. It is lovely. It's a very, very nice fragrance, but the only problem with it is literally that it doesn't last. It only lasts for about three hours and then it fades, but it's really, really good. Like I really enjoy the smell of it. Uh, if you're into your sort of fresh scents, you'll like this. In fact, you can still find bottles of this fairly cheap online. But again, if you're not, if you're not bothered about it and you're just, you know, because at the end of the day, who wants to buy a fragrance that's only going to last three hours? I mean, I wouldn't mind, personally, that, that, that's why I've got it, but I'm thinking about getting a big bottle just so I just, just so that I can add it to my collection. I think it would look really cool in front of my uh, 112 and Z14 bottles from Halston as well. But uh, this one is really, really good. I really enjoy it. Um, Halston's, Halston Z, Z, Halston Z, whatever you want to call it. I would say Halston Z because um, we don't say Z, we say Z. Because I'm British. I'm so sorry for all of the uh, hiccups, guys. This is really getting on my nerves. I'm just going to get a quick drink.
Francesco Smalto only made a handful of fragrances and seemed to now be discontinued, you know. It's a real shame. $180 for a bottle of it? Wow. It's very kind to help each other out like that. That's really cool. I was going to say that's a lot of money for a bottle of uh, for Molto. I mean, if you've got the money, then splash out, get it, you know what I mean? But it's a lot of money for a fragrance like that, even if it is genuinely old, you know? So let's get back to these guys. The next one I'm going to show you, uh, this one comes from the house of Chopard, a very, very classy French jewelry company, I believe. And this is a scent that they brought out in 1992. And this fragrance didn't really do well. Uh, and I can't really understand why, because there's a lot of fragrances that come to mind when I smell this. And of course, I'm going to tell you what those fragrances are. But uh, this one was released in 1993. I think I might, if I said 92 before, I'm sorry, but yeah, 93, this came out the same year I was born. And with this five mil miniature, I'm able to explore this fragrance. And the reason why I bought this fragrance is because of the name. The name is pretty awesome. And it's pretty much just called Heaven. Heaven by Chopard. And uh, this, this is a great scent. First off, really, really good fragrance. But it does smell a lot like other fragrances, I'm going to say that. It smells a little bit like cool water, has a bit of a, a Yope Night Flight kind of smell. It even smells a little bit like uh, Gila Roche's Horizon as well. So a lot of other blue fragrances that were released in the 90s, late 80s, this is what this fragrance was, was really trying to imitate. But what you really get out of this is... A lot of sweet fruity notes. There's a kind of oceanic vibe going on in there. It's very floral. I get a lot of jasmine personally. It's 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 actually a, a very, very good fragrance. And uh, although I was very underwhelmed actually when the first time I smelled it, because I was expecting a uh, very, very complex scent. I mean, the bottle itself, guys, is, I don't, know if, I don't know if you can say that, but we get like an angel's wing carved into it, which, I mean, the architecture, even on miniature bottles back then, is, is really, really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I was really expecting a lot. Of, in fact, hang on. This isn't even an eagle's wing. It's angel's wings. I think it's, I think it's an angel itself, sort of like, you know, showing its wings off, basically. So that's really cool. I'd never actually noticed that. But anyway, great, good scent. Just, again, it smells a lot like those other... You know, the cool water, it's not a clone of cool water by any means. It smells completely different to cool water, but there is a cool water influence in there somewhere. Um, this one, again, is just a little bit more on, it's a little bit more on the sweet side. So it smells like a sweet, fruity kind of fragrance, but very, very pleasant. I would highly recommend this, especially if you're into, you know, your fresh fragrances or if you're into your sort of, you know, bright, clean fragrances. This is good. Uh, although big bottles of this are actually extortionate online. So, yeah, the last time I had a look to see how much the bottle of this was, I think it was over 200 pounds. And I was just like, nah, screw it. Uh, happy to have this, though. I'm happy to finally have it. And personally, if I was to say, is it worth 200 pounds for, say, a 50 mil bottle? I would say no. Um, not at all. Um, you're literally only paying for the fact that it's an old bag. That's, that's all. But... I got the miniature and um, this was actually one of the most expensive miniatures I bought. I think I paid about 12, 12 pounds for this um, because it's so rare, basically. So, you know, I paid for what I got at the end of the day. I'm still happy with it. It's a really good scent. Heaven by Chopard, guys. Really good. If you have it, let me know what you think of it. If you haven't got it, if you want to know what it smells like and that, by all means, contact me. And I'll give you guys more info about about what I think they smell like. I can just give you guys like a paragraph uh, of what I personally think. And then if that wins you over, then that'll be good. So 
Another fragrance I'm going to show you now, guys, comes from a Swiss, a Swiss company now. Um, this one was released in 84, 1984. And this is a leather balsamic kind of scent that I found on base notes years ago. You know, you know, we've all done that. We've all looked on base notes at fragrances that were discontinued and whatnot, just to see what the bottles look like, see what they smell like and whatnot. Well, anyway, I was on a journey basically on base notes and I came across this company called Bali of Switzerland and I found a fragrance called Bali Masculine and I thought, wow, I would love to have that fragrance someday. And I thought, you know what, I'm never going to own it, ever. I'm never, ever going to own it. Yeah, I've got it. And I remember when I got this miniature, I was absolutely stoked because guys, masterpiece alert. <laughs> um, what this smells like to me is a mixture, a very obvious mixture of Zeno Davidoff by Davidoff and Obsession. It kind of has an Obsession vibe, but it also to me has a Bel Ami vibe to it from Hermes. Sort of like a smooth uh, balsamic covered leather smell. Uh, so it's 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 really really uh, incredible stuff. Uh, just absolutely love the bottle as well. That sort of white marble. You guys can see the uh, the marble effect actually right there quite nicely. And uh, yeah, it's a great scent. Ten mil. It's still pretty full, so I'm not never going to run out of this. I don't think. But uh, really, really good stuff. It's I just love how unique this is. It uh, it really is a great example of what really underrated hidden fragrances smell like back in the 80s. You know, it wasn't all about Antes. It wasn't all about Kuros. It was it was all about so all sorts of smells. They just needed to be discovered, you know? And I'm, that's, I'm just happy to have them. I really am. I, I, I love everything about this hobby. I mean, it's great. Literally smelling time, time capsules. At least that's what I think of it. So Bali Masculine guys from Bali of Switzerland. Bali of Switzerland are a, uh, I believe they're a clothing company, of course, from Switzerland. So I don't know if they make any new fragrances. So yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, guys, we uh, we have one, two, three, four, nine fragrances left. Holy shit. Okay, let's get through these. The next one we have is from Revlon. Revlon. Not Revlon. Revlon. And this is a scent that came out, again, the year 1984. I don't know what it was with the 80s, but 84 specifically, we had so many fragrances released. Good, solid Fragrances, Giorgio Beverly Hills for Men, uh, this, which I'm about to show you. Uh, we also have Versace Loam, which was released in 1984. Uh, Wall Street by Victor, 1984. Great, great time. Great year for fragrances. And basically what you're going to get with this is a... Uh, apparently my connection is unstable, guys. I've just got a message there on, on the screen. So if there's a problem with... Uh, any like crashing in the video, I do forgive me. It's just come up on my screen there letting me know. And uh, Jim, no, this is Revlon. I'll, I'll spell it out for you right now so that you guys can uh, understand. Spelled that right? No. There we go. Revlon. And uh, French line, basically, this guy's masterpiece. I mean, just look at this bottle here. I mean, the way that it turns off off like that and then you get the uh, fragrance just like that and basically what you're going to get with this is a rose covered leather literally it smells like a lipstick like a lipstick rose kind of smell it's like a rosy lipsticky kind of smell a little bit like an iris sort of thing going on but with that leather behind it creates this very dark mysterious classy fragrance it definitely reminds me more of like, I don't know. You can definitely imagine a French man wearing it. Um, I just think like 
the, the, the era that it comes from and like the time and the type of fragrance that it is, I can just imagine like a very well-groomed French gentleman wearing this. And I, I, I don't know why. I think it's just the smell and maybe the whole name French line. I mean, it's named after the SS Normandy, which was a, uh, a very historic cruise ship many, many years ago. Um, that's what it's inspired by. It's inspired by the SS Normandy, which of course was a French built ship. So brilliant fragrance. So guys, there's a lot of notes in this fragrance. Basically there's artemisia, there's aldehydes, there's sandalwood, there's even coconut in there. In the dry down, I don't personally get coconut, but uh, you're right, JMR, they should call it French tickler. <laughs> I'm getting vibes from uh, Bottom again, because you said that. Bottom is a great show here in the UK, and uh, the whole French tickler is kind of making me feel a bit amused. So yeah, um, French line, guys, it's all over my hands, and it smells in just incredible. So French line by Revel on the guys, 1984 release. Brilliant. Another one guys from Etienne Agner. We have free life from 1987. This is basically a patchouli scent, a uh, very strong patchouli. We get a lot of uh, balsamic notes in there as well. I personally get, Leather, I also get patchouli. There's a bit of a vanilla going on in there as well. And this to me is the perfect clone of uh, Zeno Davidoff. Um, I wouldn't want to call it a clone because it's different in its own right, uh, but it does have a very, very similar smell to uh, Zeno Davidoff. But it also comes a across smelling a little bit like Heritage by uh, Gaylan as well. And I personally think Galan and Zeno smell similar anyway. And this one definitely falls under that ball mark. Definitely. Like this has a stronger patchouli than Zeno. Uh, it's really, really good stuff. The patchouli is very, very strong in this. So if you, if you like patchouli, you'll love uh, Free Life. I mean, the bottle itself is just really, really cool. Like it, it's so like just... 80s looking. I, I don't know why, but I get like a digital, like a digitalized look out of this. I really don't, I can't explain what I mean by that, but like you can imagine this being like part of like the dashboard of like an old 80s car or something, you know? I don't know. That's just the kind of vibe that I get with this. Really, really good fragrance though, guys. Free Life by Etienne Agner. Solid, solid release. Great patchouli scent, very spicy and warm. And it lasts very, very long as well. Like easily nine hours on my skin. So I would highly recommend you guys check this again if you're a patchouli fan. Free Life by Etienne Agner. Sense of Self Jersey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? It's really good to have you on one of my live streams. I really appreciate that. Good to have you with me. Let's get back on with the list. Next one comes from the house of Van Gils. Now, Van Gils are a unusual company because I own two fragrances from this company. Well, three, including this one. I own a fragrance called Basic Instinct by them, which is basically a clone of Aqua de Gio. But this one is one of their older fragrances, and this one came out in the 80s, 88, I believe. And this one is simply just known as Van Gils, the original Van Gils from 1988. Uh, this is awesome stuff. Like, I just love the bottle, how like it's rigid. It kind of looks like, like, I know this sounds really awful, but, but it kind of reminds me of like a sex toy, just with the ridges on the side. Uh, it's, yeah. But other, other than that, very, very nice uh, bottle design. The smell again is uh, really, really, really nice. I'm trying to think what it reminds me of, because it, it definitely reminds me of another scent, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but it's very, uh, very dark scent. Uh, there's some pepper going on in there. There's some, a lot of leather, without a doubt. Oak moss. Maybe a bit of birch in there as well, because I get the smoky smell. I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, this stuff, guys, is incredible. It's 
I remember when I bought this, this was one of the first miniatures I bought. And uh, this was one of the ones that really made me fall in love with old fragrances in general. So Van Gill Skies, really, really good stuff. Good house, to be honest. Really good house. Okay, guys, so we've got uh, six more here. So these ones are just, I'm just going to go through them quickly here. So this next one, guys, comes from the year 1990. And it comes from an Italian company called Lanchetti. You guys have ever heard of this company? Let me know in those comments. But this fragrance is called Ill. Ill. I-L. That's it. I-L. Ill. Ill by Lanchetti. Well, there we go. You guys can see the writing, can't you? Ill. There we go. And uh, this is basically a sandalwood-based fragrance but not a boring sandalwood. Like it doesn't just smell like straight up sandalwood and then that's it. No, no, there's many other things going on in here. I'm trying to get it open. There we go. Sometimes it takes a while to smell because uh, I haven't opened any of these in a while, so. Okay, so there's definitely a uh, there's definitely an amber playing in there as well, like a, an ambery, woody smell with... There's definitely a sage in there, like I get like a sage smell, but it without a doubt smells insanely woody. Uh, very woody, uh, but there's a bit of an oriental aspect again with that uh, amber note, which is really, really nice. And I mean, it's not definitely what, not one of the best smells in the world, but it's a really nice fragrance. And I mean, just the, the bottle itself, the really nice deep red color, and we get ill in a nice traditional sort of writing, if you want to call it that. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't really know what ill means either. Maybe you, someone down below can let me know. But uh, yeah, there, there, that's a little bottle. <laughs> hey David, how are you doing, brother? Yeah, man, I'm showing in this video, I'm showing a lot of my uh, miniature fragrances. So, by the way, if you guys are just coming into the live stream now and are worried about things you might have missed, don't worry, this fragrance will, of course, be uploaded to my channel right after this live stream's over. So don't even worry about that, guys. You'll, you'll, you'll get to see it again. Uh, so, yeah, guys, Ill, very nice, ambery sort of sandalwood fragrance. Would really, really recommend this. It's good stuff, really good stuff. Again, for bigger bottles, Super expensive. I don't understand why. Again, you're paying for the, the name. You're paying for the uh, the fact that it's vintage. So, yeah. If this was made by a company nowadays, it would probably can be considered quite a cheap fragrance in, in all fairness. But the fact that it does, the fact that it is an old fragrance, it does have this vintage smell to it, which I, I, I don't know. I kind of like that, that, that vintage smell that perfumes give off after, after a certain amount of time. So that's Ill by Lanchetti, guys. Next one we're going to show is, okay, I'm going to show you guys the rarest miniature that I've got. This is so rare to the point where I haven't found any more online anywhere. Uh, even big balls. They, they, it's almost like the, the whole fragrance itself has gone extinct. And I've got like a tiny fossil of it here in my collection. That's how it feels. Because this fragrance is literally about, yeah, I think, I think it might, might be about three mils, about three mils, yeah. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, all of these miniature bottles that you've seen were, were classed as testers back in the day, so that you, you would literally be given one of those if you walked into, a, say, like a, a Macy's or whatnot, you would be given a miniature version of the bottle. So it was pretty cool. Um, and this, again, this is just another example. And this is a very rare fragrance to the point where you guys probably have never heard of it. And I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. Um, but if there is someone out there who has heard of this, I will be amazed. This is a very underrated fragrance, in my opinion. Kind of smells a little bit like Dracon Noir mixed with a kind of overload with vanilla, basically. That's what it smells like to me. And the fragrance that I'm talking about, it comes from a company called Esmeralda. And the fragrance is called Noir 
Desmeralda. Noir Desmeralda. Really cute looking bottle. Um, like it really is such a cool looking bottle. Gray with like this gold plaque on the front. It is made of rubber. It's not like it's made of anything weak or anything. It doesn't look like, feel like it's going to come off. So it's a really nicely designed miniature fragrance bottle, but the smell, eh, not that good. It's okay. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It definitely has a Dracon Noir smell to it, but at the same time, it has this sort of vanilla. Again, it's like a very strong vanilla aroma, which is nice. The more I'm smelling it, the more I'm starting to like it. But from all the others that I've smelled, it's probably the worst in all fairness. The rarest and also the worst fragrance. Yeah, this is the one that I would probably wear the least out of all of the miniatures that I own. Uh, I think it's mainly because it's rare and because it simply just smells like Draco Noir. And I mean, it don't mean that I don't. It doesn't mean that I don't like Draco Noir. I really love it, but I, I already own a lot of fragrances in my collection that smell like Draco Noir. You know, so I don't really want a one like this necessarily. I, I didn't want it to smell like Draco Noir. Basically, you know, when I found out that I was getting this. I was expecting something super unique. But when I smelt it, I was like, that reminds me of something straight away. And then Dracon Noir came to mind, literally came to mind. So, so yeah, there's a reason why I've never reviewed this on my channel. It's it would be a pointless review, really, because it's so rare and not anyone would probably be able to find it. Uh literally, I'm surprised I was able to find this. Um, because it's not, not it's not in base notes, it's not in Fragranica. You'll not find this fragrance anywhere. You might find it on Parfumo. But uh, there's no notes listed, so yeah, kind of shame. But it does have a Dracon Noir kind of smell, uh, which isn't bad. It, it, it smells pretty good. Uh, it's just not as great as the other fragrances in the list. So yeah, guys, that's Noir Desmeralda from Esmeralda. Okay, guys, uh, the next one I'm going to show you is another one that Matt gave me, Matt Congress my fellow fragrance reviewer here on YouTube, he gave me this uh, 7.5 mil of this fragrance two years ago now. Yeah, about two years ago. And this one is absolutely stunning. This one is called, actually, before we show it, I'm just going to read this comment two seconds. I do own a bottle of Noir Desmeralda. Bought it here, bought it in France. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That is so awesome. That's cool. Don't you hate it when that happens? Track down a rare vintage and it's not really that interesting. Yeah, exactly. They, it, it's happened quite a lot for me. And obviously it has for you, buddy. I mean, I watch your channel all the time and I've already seen the amount of uh, vintage fragrances that you've released. And a lot of them have been a bit under, under the weather. It's a real shame. You know, it, it's, it's, it's going to happen to us all. But, uh, Back to this uh, fragrance, guys. This one, like I said before, I got this one off my friend, Matt, all the way in Chicago. He sent me this for Christmas with a few others. I'm so, so grateful because this one, this is amazing. This is an amazing scent. And this one comes from 1985. And uh, this is a American-made fragrance. And it comes from a company called Camp Beverly Hills. And it's simply known as... The Men's Cologne by Camp Beverly Hills. Uh, 1985, I said, uh, this was released. So is it completely 80 smelling? Well, kind of. Uh, definitely has a, it reminds you of the beach, like, but it doesn't remind you of a typical suntan lotion smell or a typical citrus smell. No, no, this one has a soapy quality to it. Soapy, it's also very uh, floral. And it, it really, really, very, very much reminds me of Sung Hom by Alfred Sung. People know that fragrance as the Green Irish Spring Soap fragrance. Well, this one smells more like Green Irish Spring more than, uh, more than Sung Hom. This is more of a Green Irish Spring fragrance, in my opinion. Uh, 
smells really, really nice. And it lasts for a good few hours as well. I think six or seven hours, which is great. The fragrance that isn't, you know, it's, it's a cologne. It's not a, an, a, an EDT or parfum or anything. It's only a cologne. So to get that amount of uh, scent life is pretty interesting, personally. So, yeah, guys, the men's cologne from Camp Beverly Hills. And you're right, Sun Home is awesome. It's such a good scent. Okay, guys, so we've got three more now. And um, this next one comes from the house of Azaro, Loris Azaro. And it's called Actor, simply known as the Actor. I mean, uh, I hate saying this, but again, guys, another masterpiece. This one blew my brain into a million pieces the first time I smelled it. I was absolutely amazed. Literally, this is so unique to the point where I have not, and I mean not, ever smelled another fragrance like this. There's, there's no other fragrance out there that even compares to this. In my opinion, this is one of the best rose compositions that I've ever had my nose on. So, you know, like in the 70s, we had the release of Azara Porum, which is, of course, classic, classic fragrance. This one was released in 88, and uh, this one was meant to compete with Zara Poron. Unfortunately, it didn't. However, in my opinion, this is completely better than Zara Poron. And Zara Poron is a masterpiece, no doubt about it. A masterpiece down to a T. But Acta, this is amazing. Like, it's so good. Like, even the name, Acta, it smells like, like... Phantom of the Opera. That's what it reminds me of. Like, Phantom of the Opera, the rose. It smells romantic. It, I get a theatrical vibe out of this. Like, because once you apply this fragrance, it takes you on a bit of a journey. It takes you on this very, very deep journey because the fragrance changes so, so much. But that rose plays a big part throughout the whole scent life of the scent. And it's a rose that is easily enjoyable, easily unique. Um... I haven't smelled a rose like it, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of good rose fragrances out there, but it doesn't compete to this one, guys. Actor from Larissa Zaro, 1988 release, Discontinued. Doesn't compete. It's fantastic stuff. Really fantastic stuff. A very deep rose. It's also got, I think, a bit of uh, there's some uh, leather in there. There's also a little bit of pepper. So... It does have its sharpness to it, but in general, it's a very deep, um, romantic fragrance, no doubt about it. And uh, yeah, guys, can't say any more about it. Actor from Zaro. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys, so we've come to two more. Um, this one isn't really a miniature. Um, I mean, it's a small bottle, but uh, they, I'm only add, adding it into this list because it's a pretty interesting fragrance. And this, it, it technically isn't vintage, so the reason I'm adding, adding it in this video again is for no reason, really. But uh, this one, guys, I picked up on uh, eBay for like £2.99, and as you guys know, I love the note of cinnamon. Cinnamon's one of my favourites. I love how I love the spiciness, I love the, co the coziness of it, the warmth, and just the overall blend that cinnamon gives off, you know what I mean? And I wanted a fragrance that could really present that cinnamon and really show off a good cinnamon properly. And I was looking for a perfume oil I could do that. And I was able to find one. And this one comes from a company called Al Anique. And at first I thought this was a Middle Eastern house, but uh, it's actually made in the USA. It's made in uh, Bolton. Yeah. Oh no, it's manufactured here in Bolton in the US and here in the UK, but it's made in the US, which is really cool. And basically, guys, this is just simply known as cinnamon vanilla mix. Boring name, I know, but that's pretty much all it is. It's cinnamon and vanilla. There is also clove in here as well. There's a lot of other spices. Uh, there's some castorium in here as well, which I think is quite interesting. But when you smell this, it, it does smell like... In all honesty, it does smell like a Yankee candle, like the cinnamon Yankee candles that you can buy. But 
it's a fragrance that you can put on your skin. So, and personally, personally, I love that type of cinnamon scent, you know, that candle wax kind of smell. Very festive. Well, that's what this is. It's pretty much just a festive perfume form of cinnamon. And it lasts for about 16 hours. <laughs> Literally, I la it lasts for about a day. Uh, cinnamon lasts for around five hours, but then after that, you just get a nice dry down of this like very creamy kind of soft vanilla smell, which is just really, really good. So kind of pointless for me to add this into this video, but I just thought it would. Why not? It's simply known as the Cinnamon Vanilla Mix by Al Anique. So that's Al Anique. So that's A L A N E E Q. Al Anique. And uh, this stuff is incredible. So I'm definitely going to order more of these, without a doubt. And uh, we've come to my last one, guys. My last vintage miniature. And I haven't really saved the best one, the last, in all fairness. This is just the last one that happens to be on my bed here next, next to me. So this one is Cinnabar. And this is a extract parfum that I found in an antique store. And I paid about a dollar for this again. It's really old. You can see, like, like the color of the sprayer and that. Um, literally, they, the juice inside is almost like an oil because it's... It's very uh, loud stuff, this, uh, very loud. Like I've hardly sprayed it. Uh, and whenever I have sprayed it, it's filled up my room and it's made, pretty much made the whole house smell. Not a bad thing. I mean, obviously I love the smell of cinnabar. It's just incredible. Of course it's a women's fragrance, but like, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I guess I, I like it for that cinnamon. That cinnamon note in it, it's just to die for. I think it's like a rose and cinnamon combo. But yeah, Cinnabar, guys, uh, amazing stuff. Came out in the 70s, this one, I believe, and it was inspired by the, uh, by the, the, uh, the Orient, the uh, Chinese Orient. That's what it was inspired by, hence why it's got the, uh, the red and the uh, strange emblem right here. But yeah, uh, Cinnabar extract apart from spray, 0.23 fluid ounce. So this is literally only about, I don't even know. This is probably about five mils in all honesty, maybe, maybe six mil. And that's how much I've got left. So I am running low, but uh, awesome stuff. Really awesome stuff. Just shows you like if a, if a fragrance is made like with care and with good endurance, like good patience, basically, it can last for, Forever. I mean, it's probably, it's obviously not going to last for the next 20 years, maybe, but it's lasted for as long as it has now, which is amazing. Almost 50 years. Is that right? I don't know. My brain's not working. It's old, put it that way. So, guys, that has been my last one. Uh, so, there's quite a few miniatures. Um, I'm not giving up yet. There are obviously other miniatures that I want to find. Um, so it's the same with vintage fragrances in general as well. I'm not actually finished in terms of collecting. So yeah, I, I just know that this, uh, this journey is just going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Um, but it's also going to be stressful as well, because obviously I know that I'm not going to be able to find every fragrance in the world, but as long as I can find the ones that I want, I'm happy. Uh, rich. Mitch. Find a Pavarotti mini. Yeah, I would love to find a Luciano Pavarotti uh, sample or fragrance. I've heard a lot of good stuff. In fact, Scentland, uh, Chris from Scentland reviewed the Pavarotti fragrance and he gave it good ratings. So there you go. There you go. That really says a lot, really. I'm just reading through the comments. Sorry, I haven't been able to respond, by the way, while you guys have been uh, typing away there. But I'm just literally reading through the comments, and uh, it's really interesting to know that someone out there has a, also has a bottle of uh, Noir Desmeralda because it's very rare stuff. Very rare. I've got it when lockdown. I've, I've got it when lockdown over. I'll give you the. Nah, you don't have to give me anybody, honestly, you know. 
I, I'm I'm one of those people that's like, if you if you have a vintage fragrance, keep it for yourself. Um, unless you really want to show people it, that's that's the only reason. And uh, I mean, I, I really respect your kindness. I really do. I just I'm one of those people that I guess I don't like to be given stuff. I got given. I've been given so many stuff from so many of you guys in the past, and I said this on my last live stream, but uh, it, you know. I feel guilty because I've never been able to do the same back, you know? Uh, I guess the reason for that is just because of the restrictions here in the UK for actually sending fragrance. For some strange reason, it's a pain in the arse when it comes to selling fragrances, like when, it, when it comes to actually posting fragrances within the UK. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so difficult. I've tried so many times and they will not let me uh, do it. So I don't know what it is, but it's it's... It's just one of those things. So, so yeah, guys, um, it's been a little over an hour of this. It's been over an hour and 20 minutes. But, uh, but I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, nevertheless, I, I, you know, I really appreciate it. You know, the fact that, like, there's seven people watching, but, like, I think I've had up to 12 people watching. Like, that's, I think that's the most that people have been in my live stream. So, you know, I, I, I can't be thankful enough. I really can't. And, I mean, obviously, the people that do come in my live streams, like yourselves, you, you come here to to hear what I have to say. And, you know, I really, really appreciate that. Because in all honesty, I think I'm quite a boring bastard, but uh, that's just my opinion. I think I'm a really, really boring person. So when it comes to actually talking to people, say like if I was talking to people now in a room, you guys would be like this. So you're gonna shut up yet. But because I'm actually speaking on a camera, it makes it just, I don't know, a little bit better, I suppose. But no, I, I, I do, I love being on YouTube. I love, uh, I love talking to you guys. And uh, since YouTube did the whole live thing and they changed it all and they made it a bit more easier, uh, as you guys have seen, I've, I've been doing live a lot more because it is, uh, it is entertaining and it is, it is fun to do. And uh, sometimes it's just easier to do than an actual video because you've got to go through the editing process and everything. You know, you've got to write down notes and, and whatnot. Because every time I do a review, I always write down notes on my laptop so that I can look over and say so. For example, in the past, when I used to read a lot of paragraphs out, I was literally not, not technically looking dead into the camera. So I'd be looking at the laptop and then I'd be like looking away, kind of. But I'd make it so like you couldn't tell. And basically what people do on the, uh, on the news, news anchors, you know, that's what they do. But I've tried to do that in the past and it's... I've screwed up a lot and I've ended up doing loads of takes. So, um, yeah, I, I guess sometimes when you do a live stream, what I'm trying to say is when you're doing a live stream, sometimes it all just comes out and you don't really make any, that many mistakes because I don't know, I'm kind of in the zone right now. And when I'm speaking, it's just sort of coming out by itself. And yeah, that's all I'm trying to say really guys. So yeah, I just want to say a huge, 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 huge. Thank you. So thank you so much for watching. Basically, this has been, Basically just me yapping on about my vintage miniatures that I've had in my collection and I've been collecting for now on three or four years. Um, I will be collecting a hell of a lot more, like I said before. I mean, I'm certainly not finished. Um, and I'm sure you guys out there aren't finished either because there's no such thing as an incomplete. Sorry, there's no such thing. Let me, let me get that right. Fucking hell. There's no such thing as a complete fragrance collection. You're always going to add always going to add more, always going to add more. So that's exactly the type of person that uh, I am. I'm always going to buy fragrance. I'm always going to wear fragrance and I probably always will review fragrance. So thank you to each and every one of you who've shown support to me and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching guys. Really means a lot to me. And uh, I just want to say a big, big thank you to each and every one of you who are actually watching this. Um, like I'm looking at your names now and, if I could, I would say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you individually. But uh, that would take too long. And I just want to say, you know, uh, thank you to each and every one of you for actually listening to me and taking the time to just check out my collection. It really means a lot. So, guys, look after yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling good. Hope you're actually having a really good time and looking after yourselves during these hard times because they can't get any harder, especially if we keep smiling. So keep smiling and smelling good, guys. I will see you all probably in the next stream. Um, I don't really know when it'll be, but um, I'm hoping to do a stream at least every night from now on. 
Um, that way people can get used to the fact that, you know, they're seeing, seeing me doing live streams and you'll not get used to the fact that I am a boring a-hole. No, I'm joking. I think I'm boring. You guys will disagree, but I am incredibly uh, boring in my opinion. Uh, Stefan Fragrance, what's up? Good to see you. Lania, hello. How are you, my friend? My God. When was the last time I spoke to you, Mr. Smith? So good to see you. Fragrance Anatomy. Hello, my friend. How are you? Thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you, Rich. You know what it is, mate? I enjoyed making this. It's been a really, really, really good live stream. Take care. Glad I caught the end of this. I appreciate you so much, uh, Sense of South Jersey. Hopefully, uh, we will do a collab one of these days, my friend. I would love for that to happen. It certainly has been a few years, uh, Lanny, that, that's, that's for sure. But it's really good to see you. Really good to see you. I hope, you, hope you're doing well. Not boring, just born in the wrong decade. You easily got that right. You easily got that right. I, was, I wish I was born. What would, have my, what, what would have my ideal decade have been? Wow. I wish I was born in the, uh, the 50s. So that, I could have ex so that I could have experienced the 80s a bit better. That would have been the best. Whatever. Fragrances are still good nowadays. Not all of them are bad. You've just really got to uh, look around, you know. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I don't know how many times I've said goodbye. Um, but I, And thank you. Again, thank you. It's another thing. I say thank you a hell of a lot because I mean it. And... Uh, just thank you so much again for watching. Uh, keep smelling good. And uh, I will see you all in the next video slash live stream, whenever that will be. And uh, yeah, ciao for now, everyone, including you, Lania. Bye for now, my friend. Goodbye to everyone else. Look after yourselves. Much love. Keep smelling good. Bye for now.